This Cloud Manager image has enhanced environment advisories, adding additional ways to help administrators manage their environments. The Cloud Manager Administrator enables or disables advisories for all environments from the Cloud Manager Settings, Advisory Settings page. Advisories are enabled by default. Cloud Manager Image 17 provided advisories called Recommendations for Infrastructure CPU and Mid-Tier Scaling. This Cloud Manager image adds application-level and server-level advisories. Application-level advisories include reports of issues like application errors and application crashes. The server-level advisory is triggered when the available boot volume percent for the environment drops below a specified level. Click the Settings button to enter the threshold as a percent of the total boot volume size. The Advisories feature uses tags to let administrators control which environments are monitored. The Advisories features will not work for environments that have no tags associated with them. You can enable or disable one or more advisories for a specific environment and set the threshold for the server level boot volume percent in Settings. When advisories are available for an environment, a green counter appears on the environment card, indicating the number of advisories. Click the badge to review all the advisories available for an environment. Click the Application Level Details icon to see the node type and description of the issue. You can drill down further to more specific details of the error and the location of the file. When you drill down into the details for the server level advisory, you see the percentage used for each partition of the boot volume so you can pinpoint which one is over the threshold. This completes the Enhanced Environment Advisories description. You can now create a cluster for open search deployments, which provides your environment with redundancy and scaling capabilities. In this example, a Cloud Manager Administrator creates a topology with a database tier, middle tier, and multiple search nodes. Search clusters are currently not supported for full-tier topology. When defining the environment template based on this topology, the administrator specifies the same cluster name and cluster transport port for all the search nodes. Search clusters are supported only for OpenSearch instances. The administrator must also ensure that the VCN subnet that is used for the provisioned environments includes the appropriate security rules to allow communication to the cluster transport port. After the environment is provisioned, the multiple search nodes are displayed on the Environment Details page. Searches performed on a cluster will return integrated results from each of the nodes. Go to the provisioned environment. The global search bar indicates that the search framework has been configured. Cloud Manager uses the People Tools Automated Configuration Manager, or ACM, to configure the PeopleSoft search instance with metadata for multiple search nodes. After provisioning, you need to modify the search options to set the number of replicas to one or more. This ensures that search indexes are replicated within the cluster, which protects against loss of data in case a search node fails. If you have an existing environment with no search nodes or with a single search node, you can use the Manage Node page to add additional search nodes. You configure the nodes as a cluster by ensuring that the cluster name and cluster transport port are the same for all search nodes. After creating a search cluster on an environment, you can also share it with other environments in Cloud Manager. Because you can use the same search cluster for different PeopleSoft products like HCM and FSCM, customers can save costs on compute resources with a shared search cluster. To share a search cluster, the provisioned environment can't have any search nodes or search clusters. Select Manage Node from the Related Action menu and then select Add. After you select Search Stack, you'll see the option for Search Topology. Select Shared Search. This option is available only when environments with search clusters are available. The environments that include search clusters appear. Click Submit. When complete, the Environment Details page indicates that the environment shares a search cluster. This completes the support for Open Search Clusters feature description. Cloud Manager introduces new features to help you utilize Exadata capabilities for storage and cost savings. You can now use Exadata sparse clones to quickly create space-efficient databases. Sparse clones are thinly provisioned databases, which means all read operations are performed against a parent database, and all writes are stored in the sparse clone database. Sparse clones are fast to create and far less storage, since they only track data changes. 
a test master is a full read-only copy of a database that we use to create sparse clones. Cloud Manager introduces a new page called Sparse Hierarchy Details to enable you to create a test master on an Exadata environment. You can create multiple test master pluggable databases that clone the source environment. The Sparse Hierarchy Details page displays all the available test masters associated with the source environment. You can also view the status of test master creation on this page. After creating a test master on an Exadata database, you can create a sparse clone from the test master by enabling the sparse clone option on the clone page. You can do this in the local container database or CDB of the source environment, a remote CDB, or a new database system. The test master collapsible panel on the sparse hierarchy details page displays sparse clones created using the test master. The details column corresponding to a test master shows test master details like cluster name, PDB name, and OCID of the instance, as well as the tasks that are performed in the test master lifecycle in the form of job status information. Cloud Manager displays a failure icon when a task fails. After debugging and fixing the error in the logs, you can retry to complete the task, or you can manually complete the step and then mark the task as completed. Use the Refresh button to refresh the test master with the source environment. You can use the Delete button to remove the test master. Before performing either of these actions, you must ensure that all the child sparse clones of the test master are deleted. This completes the demonstration of the Exadata Sparse Clone Environments feature. Previously, for database system environments, Cloud Manager allowed backup and restore when there was only one pluggable database, or PDB, in the container database, or CDB, of the environment. Now, you can backup and restore a database system environment when the CDB of the environment contains multiple PDBs. The backup and restore option is enabled in all database system environments, regardless of whether they share a common CDB. Previously, the option was only available for those environments where the database occupied a CDB exclusively. You can restore only one PDB at a time, and parallel restoration of environments that share the same CDB is not supported. As a prerequisite for this feature, you must enable auto backup settings for the CDB containing the environment's PDB. Data restoration depends on the retention period you select in the database auto backup configuration. The restore option will be available when the backup is reflected in OCI. In some cases, this can take up to 24 hours. This completes the Multi-PDB Backup and Restore Improvements feature description. A new manual review configuration allows administrators to introduce manual stops to pause and review the processing of customer DPK activity. You can do this at the template level or during environment provisioning. You can override the default settings present in the template during environment provisioning. By default, the option to go with the selection made during template creation is enabled. You can enable or disable all manual review steps using this field. Modify the selection for individual instances in General Settings. Additionally, you can retry activities or action steps that are successful when a provisioning step fails. Previously, this option was available only for failed steps. The option to mark any step as complete is still available only for failed activities and action steps. When you select either the Retry or Mark as Complete option, the corresponding action is triggered and the menus are disabled further. On triggering a Retry action, the information is updated in Retry History. This completes the Customer DPK Enhancements description. You can now choose Oracle Database 23 AI when creating environments in Cloud Manager. It's the next long-term support release of Oracle Database and includes more than 300 new features with a focus on artificial intelligence and developer productivity. To use Oracle Database 23 AI, create an environment template that includes a DB Systems node. Under Custom Attributes, DB System Options, select Oracle Database 23 AI from the Software Release drop-down list. Oracle Database 23 AI is currently not supported for full tier nodes and database tier nodes on compute. It is supported for DB Systems, Exadata, and Autonomous Database, or ADB. This completes the support for Oracle 23 AI databases description. We've only shown you the highlights of this Cloud Manager update. For more information and other enhancements, see the CFO tool, the image overview on My Oracle Support, 
and go to the PeopleSoft Information Portal for updates.